Hey there, mates. LKB Action here, how are we going? Um, this is uh, part two of my first long range shooting video uh, where I started in my 308 and also um, ran some ammunition and started in my uh, .22 Savage Mark II rifle. So uh, you saw the footage of uh, the range. So now let's, uh, let's discuss uh, how the shots went. Uh, pretty interesting, so um, uh, stay tuned. Alright mates, uh, so on the range um, we did a 308, uh, tried to sight that one in, uh, but also got on the .22, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the goal is with the .22 is to get out to um, 100 and then out to at least uh, 200 metres, uh, even 300, so uh, long, range, um, long range hunting I'm, I'm aiming for um, with that small, uh, smaller calibre, but anyway, so um, I hadn't been on the, uh, the .22 for, for a little while, had a new scope on top, um, I'll show you the, the footage of the, the reticle, but um, it was all new, so um, I had to sight it all in. So you can see here, this is my very first uh, 50 meter sight in uh, with the four types of ammunition. Um, so we've got the CCI standards, I had the Stingers, I had the Winchester Subsonics, and then uh, the Mini Mags for the very first time. All right, so that's what it looks like in general. Let's, uh, let's have a look at them individually. What I did was 10 shot groups uh, at each of those um, to see um, which one uh, the rifle liked. Uh, and see if it was uh, sighting in all right. All right, let's check them out a little bit more closely, hey? All right, so let's uh, let's have a look at how the uh, CCI stands went through. So um, the CCI stands, I'll put the uh, the details, um, uh, the advertised uh, feet per second, and uh, the grain, I can't remember, grain weight, I can't remember off the uh, top of my head. But this is how they shot, as I said, 10 shot groups. Uh, point of aim was here, um, and the impact, as you can see, is that it was above, or a little bit high. In the center, though. All right. So I was doing ten shot groups. So you can see here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I think uh, the other three was uh, drifting up there. As you can see, um, they're making a path up the top there. So um, a pretty wide, a pretty wide um, group as well. Um, I didn't measure in the day, but um, I'll I'll do a measurement and uh and I'll put it on the screen. But that's uh, that's the the spread, I guess, of the ten shot group uh, with the CCI standards. Um, so um, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty um, a pretty popular round. Um, works in a lot of uh, long rifles. Uh, very uh, affordable uh, for those guys who are new to uh, point two two uh, shooting. Um, I mean, they're about six seven bucks um, for for the fifty. So um, it's a very affordable. So um, they that was the CCI standards. I'm um, pretty pretty large group. So let's see if um, if they tighten up. All right. So next we've got the CCI Stingers. Now these um, are pretty cool as well. Uh, a bit faster out of the muzzle. Again, I'll put the details. Grain weight and uh, um, velocity uh, up on the screen. But um, the difference with these CCI Stingers is, um, I think they've got uh, the uh, nickel, nickel casing uh, or nickel shells. So, um, so as you can see, 10 short groups here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, so pretty, um, <laughs> this is a 50 meters, that says, shows, uh, tells you how, um, how, uh, how much I've been on the trigger, not much at all. Um, at 50 meters, they should be pretty tight. They should be around here uh, for a 10 shot group. But anyway, this is what they are. And this is, um, without sighting that rifle in, uh, I just, uh, just ran them through, um, aiming for uh, the red dot here. Uh, these are my own targets. I'll do another video on that, but my own targets to save a bit of money. Um, but yeah, this is a 10 shot group. As you can see, a lot wider um, than the standards. Um, so, not sure what that really tells me. It could be me flicking it or um, the inconsistency of the of the round. Um, but the stingers are generally faster, um, and and if you sight them in, I guess um, to to your rifle or you should, you sight the rifle into those, I think they'll perform quite well as well. But like I said, that's 50 meters. Um, any any ammunition 50 meters, you should be able to get a grouping around here or inside half an inch. But anyway, that's my grouping for the CCI standards. Um, also, I was running running these ones through, and I think before I actually zeroed it in, um, which is probably a rookie mistake. I probably should have zeroed it in first and then took the shots. Um, but anyway, that's where they they were for the CCI stands. Okay, number three. Um, I've got a label up here CCI subs, but that wasn't actually a subsonic round. And CCI is actually the Winchester subsonics. Again, I'll put up the details, the um, the feet per second plus the uh, the grain weight for that particular ammunition. But um, yeah, it's a little bit confusing here. There's more than 10. Um, I'm gonna try and nut it out. Uh, when you see the next, uh, the next, um, the target will uh, all be explained. So 
Uh, remember, I was uh, aiming for the, uh, the point of impact was here in the middle, 50 meters. Um, now, I think uh, it was this group up here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and maybe some of these here, eight, nine, ten, or maybe even up. But I think um, this half up was the Winchester Subsonics. And again, you can see it's a pretty wide spread um, at 50 meters. Uh, again, could be me, and definitely you know, the, the, the rifle wasn't zeroed in. Um, I just uh, kept pointing here, and hopefully. I think he was up there again. I haven't been on for a while. I was a bit excited. Rookie mistake, didn't zero it in. Um, uh, with the new scope as well. All right. So again, I put the, um, the information for the CCI. I uh, sorry the Winchester uh, Subsonics uh, uh, up on the screen. But you can see here to here um, a pretty big spread. I think it's even bigger than what you saw with the Stingers. Um, a little bit less than the um, than the standards. All right. So uh, we'll have a look at the last. Uh, the last uh, ammunition type that I had, and I actually shot it for the very first time. So we'll see how, how these ones went. Okay, number four. Now, for the very first time, shooting the mini mags. Uh, pack of 100, again, pretty cheap. Um, can't remember off the top of my head, but somewhere around the $9 mark, I think, or a little bit more. But um, the, um, <laughs> the 10 shot group for the first time out of the Mark II uh, for the first time. So. Um, I think what I, what's happened here is I started here, so you can see one, two, three, four. Um, then I think I got confused with which target. So this is the bottom right on my uh, on my target. Um, then I got confused with the upper target and I started shooting up at the top here. So you can see here that's for one, two, three, four. Then I think I started aiming up here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, up, up in that shoe. So you can see it's grouping quite well. So it's probably um, grouping out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, let's just say that uh, at a small uh, spread there. So am um, I just looking at that very, very, very roughly? The mini bags are shooting much better um, at the moment uh, through that rifle. So um, I think I'm going to stick with them, uh, and you get a pack of 100 rather than just the 50. So um, so yeah, so quite enjoyed it. I'll put up the, the information, the the feet per second. These guys come out of the muzzle, plus also the grain weight. But um, very, very good, uh, very good round effect. Uh, if it, uh, cost efficient. Um, it's always in stock, um, and uh, the groups of you know I can tighten them up when I actually zero in my my um, my scope. All right, so that's what I did um, with my ten shot groups, uh, just straight up on the range. Hadn't shot for probably about a month or two. Um, put a new rifle, a uh, new scope on the rifle, uh, and just forgot to actually zero it in before I did these ten shot groups. I just aimed for the middle of all those targets and just kept on shooting. Um, so it gives me a rough idea of how they're performing. Um, it looks like the mini mags are performing very well out of all of those uh, those four, the Stingers, the Standards, um, and the Winchester uh, Subsonics. So um, next time I go out, I'll definitely zero that in before uh, I start again, and I'll, I'll do a very quick 10-shot group uh, with each of them, and uh, we'll see them getting a little bit closer. But they should be all, in, especially in 50 meters, or uh, in the 50 meter range, they should be around uh, half an inch uh, or less. Uh, definitely no more than an inch 10-shot uh, group. So. Um, so again, that's uh, that's me a couple of months um, off the trigger. All right, so I'm just going to bring you back to um, where I was a bit confused with my, with my mini bags. So as I mentioned, I was aiming down here for the first four rounds. You can see here, one, two, three, four. Uh, point of aim was here. Uh, then I think I got distracted, uh, looked away, uh, got off the off the off the rifle, but then went back on it, and I uh, must have got confused, thinking I was aiming for this one. So this is where all these bottom sections are from, uh, I would imagine. So um. For the rest of my tension groups, so that's what four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, uh, or just somewhere here. So I got them confused a little bit, but you can see, like I said, uh, when I was showing you the mini mag uh, uh, results, um, that's a pretty, that's a, that's the tighter group out of the four um, for me at the moment. So um, the mini mags are, uh, are obviously performing a bit better. Um, and uh, keep in mind to remember which target you're shooting. Um, whilst I'm here, this is my own little uh, target I've made. Um, just off some cardboard paper, just uh, put red dot stickers on um, and just uh, corded the, uh, an A4 piece of paper. I'll do a video, I guess, on, uh, on that. But I've done a whole heap of these, different colours, different designs, and uh, um, they're bigger as well. So you'll see uh, in this review, when I look at, look at my other shots, um, you'll see some of my own homemade ones. Pretty easy, pretty cost efficient, and uh, you can make them at home. So, um, but yeah. so, um, so yes, here's another shot up here I just found. So I think that's off, off the tail end of here. Um, so yeah, so anyway, got to know which uh, which target you're shooting at. All right, let's have a look at the big guy, uh, the 308 at 200, 100 meters, and um, and see what's going on with that scope. 
All right, mate, so, uh, so now we'll move on to the 308. Uh, so I'm shooting uh, with a Remington 783 factory, uh, completely stocked. The only thing that's uh, been modified is, uh, is a paint job that I, uh, that, I, that I did very rushly. But apart from that, uh, pretty factory, everything's factory, stock, barrel, everything is, um, is factory. Okay, so, so what I did, um, again, I put a, that's my long range rifle. Um, I'm aiming to get you know to 600, then out to uh, to a thousand meters. But 600 is the is the is the skill set at the moment that I'm aiming for. Um, and now I found I had the standard three by eight by nine, uh, three by nine by forty um, scope on the uh, on the rifle that came factory. So I swapped that out. I couldn't see any targets. You need a, you need to see the target to hit it. So um so I upgraded the uh, the scope to uh, I think it was a four by twenty four by fifty objective, so I could see it much better, much more clear. So anyway, so I put that scope on. Now this is my shots at a hundred meters. Uh, thinking that you know uh, three hundred eight's easy to hit at a hundred meters. So I put it on a hundred meters. You can see here, uh, no impact at all. Uh, look at the bottom here, no impact at all. So I think that was after about mm, ten rounds. I think ten rounds. Uh, then I stopped. Okay, so that's uh, 100 meters. Um, 308 should be able to hit that. So it tells me with the scope. Um, before I put it on, I, I was playing around with the knobs, um, trying to find uh, find the zero or trying to find uh, where it's sitting at. I probably should have done that at home, uh, maybe bore sight at home. Um, uh, try and try and get it at least close to zero. Uh, as you can see, nothing in those shots up here fresh. Not that I can tell because that's all <laughs> worn away. But nothing on the outside here. Nothing on the outside, so uh, that tells me I'm way out, whether I'm way high or my windage is left and right. So that's uh, that was my first 10 shots, uh, trying to look at it. Um, I think I had that at full power, um, at 100 meters full power, and then I magnified it to about maybe 10 um, to try and see if I could see any holes. Um, I need to get a spotting scope or a pair of, binoc a pair of binoculars, I'll make the job a bit easier, um, but I couldn't see any impact. All right, so let's see, um, let's see what I did next. All right, guys. So um, that was uh, uh, at 100 meters. Now this is at 50 meters. Now you can see a, a bit of a different design uh, target here. This is the 50 meter um, targets I've made up uh, using half of the A4 page. So a bit bigger, um, and I haven't got the size of those, but um, a bit bigger. Um, obviously a little bit further away. So anyway, you can see here um, 308. Trying to click it in uh, again. No impact. Um, aiming for the center point of point of impact was the center. Um, and no impact at all. Um, now, whilst I took a shot, I, um, I adjusted left and right, all the way left, all the way right, trying to get on there just to get a bit of a, uh, an idea of where I was, um, but didn't hit anything. So, um, so I got a bit frustrated to get a bit of frustration out. I, um, I dished that, get the 22 again, and you can see these little ones up here um, just uh, busted a little bit, a couple, a couple out there. I'm not sure why I didn't aim for there, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so that's at 100 meters, uh, sorry, 50 meters, uh, no impact there, aiming for the center um, with my Tasco uh, 4 by 24 by 50 objective lens. So I should be able to hit it at uh, 50 meters. Um, obviously, um, nothing there. So the scope isn't uh, clicked in. So let's see what I did next to try and uh, get on the paper at least. All right, so after trying uh, 50 meters, I brought it in even closer to 25 meters. So um, you can see here we're starting to get some um, some uh, impact on the paper. Now uh, at 100 meters, took about 10 shots, uh, nothing. So uh, I drew it in about 50 meters, took another 10 shots, um, drew it in. Now you can see here, there's impacts here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, there's 11 on the paper, but there's uh, another nine off the paper. Um, now, the funny thing is, this is 25 meters, so uh, the scope, the, the reticle's coming in, the scope's starting to zero in. I actually didn't know what I was, uh, I couldn't remember um, what I made the adjustments to get on the paper. So, for example, I got on here, uh, I, I thought um, I was aiming for here. Uh, I thought I was going for my windage, hit my windage, and the next minute I'm off or I'm over here. So I was very confused. I, uh, another rookie mistake, not remembering what you're clicking in, what adjustments you're making. So um, maybe I, uh, at this stage I was getting a bit frustrated, so my patience was, <laughs> was running very thin. But, um, but it was more frustrating getting on the paper and then not knowing where I was. So some of these shots were actually, you know, I got two on, and the next minute I was off the, off the, off the target. 
uh, wasted about two or three uh, shots, then I got back on, uh, just in frustration, just click it back to where it was, and didn't know how, or what, what I was adjusting to get on the paper, so, um, so yeah, so uh, a couple of lessons learnt, but that's 25 metres, it's hitting, so um, the reticle's in there, um, getting there closer. So at that, at, at that stage, I was uh, too frustrated to continue. So um, when it becomes unpleasant, uh, you kind of have a break or you, you, um, you pack up. And I chose to pack up. I, uh, I had my, uh, my 243 in the car reader to cite that one in, but um, I, I had enough, so, um, so I packed it in. All right, so that's, uh, that's what I got onto the 25 meters here on the paper. Uh, so I know uh, that reticle is getting closer to that zero mark. All right, let's um, let's talk about uh, how I'm going to zero that uh, that one in. All right, so you saw the shots there. Um, the the 22 is shooting okay. Um, uh, it'll shoot much better, shoot, shoot much tighter once I uh, hit those uh, run the mini mags through them and then sight that um sight that uh, that scope in or zero it in. Um, I think it'll be very very uh, right on the money. Uh, now with three hour wait, uh, I've got to uh, zero it in because you can see at the last target it's all over the place. Now what I did to rectify that, now um, I did I bore sighted the rifle, so um, I uh, I took the bolt out, uh, looked through the barrel uh, at a target or a, uh, uh, a spot, um, and got that on, and then I uh, looked through the scope above it, not touching the rifle of course, um, and then um, brought the crosshair down to. Where that um, where I could see the uh, the the target through the barrel. So um so hopefully now it's bore sided. So at least if it's not going to be right on, at least it's going to be quite close. Um, I might even do a video on how to do the bore side or how I did it uh, for those guys who haven't done it before, um, or if you run into any problems like like I did. So um so definitely bore sided. Um, so hopefully you'll get on the uh, on the mark. All right. So um lots of lessons learned um, through that one. Uh, keep track of the targets that that you're shooting. Um, bore sight um, your uh, your rifle or, or sight it in before you take your 10 shot groups and things like that um, but I now know that the mini mags run uh, running nicely through through that so I'm um, through my um, through my savage mark 2 so um, I'll be uh, getting a lot more of those ones at, at 100 meters uh, with my scope um, uh, on the target much uh, much faster uh, my previous scope was just the reticle, or this cross, it was just the crosshair. Um, this one, um, I'll explain it, I'll, have, I'll show you now. So this is the reticle, um, it's the 3 by 9 by 40 scope, so pretty standard stock, uh, pretty standard uh, size scope. Um, but this is the reticle in the middle here. So uh, you can see here, it's got some little red uh, lines here for your elevation and your windage, uh, which helped me out uh, a great deal, uh, 100 meters. Um, right in the center there, and as I get further and further out, I can just um, elevate it to these marks. So I've just got to work it out on uh, what what they all are, uh, what the values are on the on the Savage. Um, and then you've got this underneath here, so obviously for a bit longer. Now, I think I'm going to swap it out for or when I get uh, out to 200 meters, get a get a scope that has the this style of crosshair. Um, I just think there's too much information here. Just this gets in in the in the way. Um, but I think this is a lot better, a lot faster to learn rather than the mill dots. This is just, um, uh, sorry, MOA, faster than MOA. This is the mill dots. Um, so you just um, uh, get your values and then uh, you know what, how much you've got to elevate it. The same with the win windage. Okay, so hopefully I can get rid of that. But if you know what this is called, uh, I think it's a tree. Um, I'm not sure what, what it's called. Um, let me know. Comment down the bottom. Um, I'd be interested to... Uh, to know, but uh, it looks like it's got two styles of um, crosshairs here. It's got the Milrad, uh, Milrad one and uh, this tree style. So hopefully I can get one that's just got that and I think it'll be a lot more effective uh, at a long range. All right. All right guys, so there you have it. That's my first long range shooting video. Um, done as the discussion about the targets. So uh, what, what I'll be doing is I'll be doing two parts to each of these um, long range shooting um, videos. I'll do um, my range time and then we'll discuss uh, the targets. Uh, it's a bit too long to be um, in the one video, all right? So we'll break it into two videos. Okay, so um, that's it. Now it's the end of the year coming out very close. I'm hoping to get on the range uh, one or two more times to just to really um, uh, zero in that, uh, that scope to start getting out to 100, 200, 300 meters. I'm still in the ammo selection, um, I guess process. There's a couple of ammunition I still want to try um, and get on uh, and see how I have the rifle shooting at 50 meters, um, like the um, Highlander RXs, uh, hollow point, um, 0.22 um, ammunition, um, and some other ones as well. But those mini mags are performing really well at the moment through my uh, my Savage Mark II 
rifle, so I'll definitely stick with those. All right, with the 308, just got to sort out that scope. Uh, it's bore sighted in now, so hopefully the next time I see uh, I see you guys on the range, um, I'll be getting closer and I'll actually zero that one in. And then I hope to get the 243 out. Um, I'll have a bit of play around, sight that scope in, um, and then see how we go with that. So hopefully in the new year, 2020, I'll have all three of my uh, rifles all sighted in and ready to go. Um, and start getting out to that long range distance with my 22 and the 308 and then start trying to get my first uh, my game uh, first hunt uh, with my uh, 243 okay so um now if you're new here to the channel uh, thank you for clicking on uh, don't forget to um, click uh, subscribe down the bottom there hit the thumbs up leave a comment I uh, like chatting interacting with everybody um, and if you haven't already have a look at my other videos um, uh, all about all the range, uh, a whole heap of different things. So, um, so until next time, um, definitely shoot safe, check out sports shooting, and uh, get on the trigger.